Have you ever wanted to own some of these VHS tapes? Well, now you can at the Back to the Past store on eBay. I'm selling a ton of tapes from my collection, some rare and some not so rare. So just click the link in the description and buy a piece of the past today. Wow, I officially have 10,000 subscribers. Granted, 99% of those subscribers are probably dead accounts now, but that's not the point. Such a great milestone should definitely be celebrated. But to be honest, I'm not really sure how. I mean, 10,000 subscribers? 10? What kind of review could I possibly make that has any significance to the number 10? Well, don't you worry, my friends, because I have just the answer, and I think you all know what it is. Ben 10! Yeah, you all remember this one, right? It's that classic Cartoon Network show about a kid who gets an alien watch glued to his arm, allowing him to transform into 10 different aliens and beat up the bad guys with all kinds of wacky superpowers. And since it has the number 10 in the title, I think we should spend the next 10 hours going through every episode in excruciating detail. Okay, episode 1, and then there were 10. Get it? 10? So this one starts off with Ben Tennyson, a 10-year-old boy, getting his daily 10 minutes of torment from the local school bullies, and this is a really terrible joke, isn't it? I mean, I apologize. I'm just disgusted with myself 10 times over. Alright, I know what you really want. A top 10, right? Well, since you asked so nicely, you've got it. Now, in many of my past VHS reviews, I've always tried to talk about the trailers, but you know what needs some deeper analysis? The ads. Yeah, VHS tapes are just crawling with all kinds of marketing mayhem. It's just never-ending. Most of them are pretty normal stuff, but others are flat-out insane. So let's take a look at 10 of the craziest VHS adverts and melt our brains in the process. <laughs> Take tea, my dear. I like my toast on one side. But you can hear it in my accent when I talk. I'm an Englishman in New York. Whatever's going on outside. You'll always feel really good inside. Two wickets in two balls. England really are having a dream start to the day. The new Rover 200. Okay, so this one might not be that high up on the weirdness scale, but I do like it a lot. Adverts often seem to exist in their own little world, and I feel like this one takes place in that mythical location known only as the Good Universe. Everyone's so happy and upbeat. Yeah, here's your keys. Can I scrub your car for free, sir? It's like everyone's living their best life and nothing matters except Mr. Perfect here cruising around town in his shiny new car. There's something very soothing about this advert because of that. Maybe it's the Sting soundtrack or something. It just feels relaxing. That said, it is pretty weird how the guy just drives his car straight into his apartment. I mean, that thing must be a nightmare to reverse out of there. But who cares? Mmm, biscuits. The new Rover 200. Counselor, I urge you to continue. Urge. Urge. I've got the urge. She's got the urge to purple. She ran the purple in the shower. Water! For another half an hour. She's got the urge. Natural botanical. She's got the urge to purple. Water! Order me a couple bottles of that. <gasps> Nothing can stop the urge to herbal. Yeah, maybe you can guess why this one's a bit weird. What's with the setting here? What does a courtroom have anything to do with shampoo? Counselor, I urge you to continue. Was it that line? Simply because it has the word urge in it? Did they drag up the premise of this advert just from that one tiny string of dialogue? Secondly, why does it suddenly turn into a musical? There's no rhyme or reason to it. It's not like these guys are dressed up as lawyers or anything. Who are they? The barbershop bros? Are you allowed to just have people sing a shampoo sing-along right in the middle of a criminal trial? Even the judge doesn't care. Maybe this is how law works in the good universe. Everything's just a laugh. Nothing can stop the urge to herbal. Oh, fish fingers for tea. <laughs> Don't worry where you are. Follow the 
a star! The golden's not far! <laughs> From these waters in my special crumb, pure gold. Yeah! Now, onward bound! <laughs> Birdseye, fantastic fish fingers! Ah, Captain Birdseye, the man who made fish fingers a household name, even to the point where he'll kidnap a group of children and force them to ski through a snowy tundra just to get their hands on a box of processed supermarket food. I mean, what a bizarre setup. It's weird enough that a pack of fish fingers will teleport you straight into an icy wasteland, but why is Captain Birdseye presented as some kind of mythical figure here? Follow the star! The golden's not far! <laughs> What is he, Ben Kenobi? Not to mention the fact that kids are so happy to go on this weird quest that they don't even question it. I think if someone had plucked me from my home and dumped me in the middle of nowhere, I might just be a little bit peeved. And why is there a pirate ship in the Arctic? Uh, never mind. And that's the reward? We just spent hours becoming instant experts at skiing through the ice in sub-zero temperatures, and all we get is a box of fish fingers? What a ripoff! And then he just sends them home like it's nothing. Well, we never see them get home, actually. Yeah, they just kind of vanish. For all I know, Bird's Eye has baked those kids into that box of fish fingers. I always knew he was up to no good. Fantastic fish fingers! crazy, but I always found this advert slightly eerie the first time I saw it on an old VHS. Maybe it was the combination of seeing it alone in the dark in the middle of winter that gave me the shivers a little. At first glance, it just seems like a basic advert, a girl sitting in the bath eating a flake. I mean, that's amazing in itself, as if there's one thing guaranteed to make you messy, it's a flake. That stuff sprays everywhere, so it's already unrealistic. Still, I don't know, there's something about this girl that raises the hairs on the back of my neck. The music has a vaguely creepy quality, and the way she opens her eyes is almost like something out of a horror film. Even the whole concept of sitting in this big gothic chamber just to eat a chocolate bar doesn't sit right with me. It's presented like some kind of demented ritual, like in Eating the Flake, she's selling her soul. Seriously, just look at her. She doesn't care about life anymore. She just sits there in the bath waiting for the whole room to flood. When the camera pans away, I'm almost expecting blood to start pouring under the door. And why are there roses on the floor here? Did she kill her husband before? For this or something? Is she a murderer? See? This ad really is creepy. Cadbury's Flake, the crumbliest, flakiest milk chocolate in the world. of creepy, I honestly couldn't think of anything more terrifying than drawing a picture on the window and having a psycho clown come to life before my eyes. I don't know why this girl is so amused. She should be running from the room, screaming. I know Ronald McDonald has been a staple of the company for decades now, but I still can't shake off that feeling that instead of wanting kids to eat at McDonald's, he wants to eat them. Still, drawing on windows, that's a deep childhood cut. I used to do that all the time on long car journeys, minus the killer clown of course. <laughs>
Yay, Cartoon Network, what's crazy about that? Well, everything. Just look at Dexter in this ad, he's completely lost it. This used to be the kid who came up with amazing inventions and saved the future, but now? He's a crazy psychopath who's kidnapped all your favourite Cartoon Network characters and trapped them in floating jars of ooze. No one is spared from his evil, his sister, Courage the Cowardly Dog, Ed, Ed and Eddie, even the Powerpuff Girls. Yes, he's knocked out the Powerpuff Girls. That's just sick. What is this cruel contraption anyway? Some kind of soul-sucking device for innocent cartoon characters? Maybe this is Dexter's ultimate plan to enslave all the competition. And look at the way he's laughing evilly at their pain. It's disturbing. If this was meant to be the original ending to the series, then it's one messed up conclusion. I'll never look at this kid in the same way again. <laughs> Okay, so this is one of the most infamous ads of the 90s, and you can probably see why. It's completely bonkers, like a bad fever dream brought to life. It'd be useless to try explaining the plot of this one because, well, I can't explain it. It's just an endless line of weird imagery that historians will be picking apart for centuries as they try to answer that all-important question, why does this want to make me buy car tires? It has all the qualities of a nightmare. Eerie music, demonic entities, flashes of insanity that flicker through your mind in the blink of an eye. Who are these creatures? These strange creations? We'll never know the answer. And frankly, given the look of some of these maniacs, I'm not sure if I want to know the answer. All I can say is that the ad certainly lives up to its slogan, tested for the unexpected. Well, it was definitely unexpected, and I probably need to be tested for it. was pleasant. This is exactly the kind of advertising that makes me want to spend all my money on a can of fizzy pop, a demon chud looking to consume my soul. Just imagine trying to watch this as a child. It looks like some kind of innocent preschool commercial, but then it suddenly turns into Damien here unleashing his wrath on the whole classroom. It just comes out of nowhere. What's up with this ad? Who was it meant for? At the end, it just says different. Different from what? Different from other drinks? Is that what they were going for? By taking the company in a unique devil worshippers angle, we're marking ourselves out as the most original drink in town? Well, I guess I can't argue with that. Even the can at the end is upside down. This ad needs an exorcism. And I think if I watch this for any longer, I'm gonna sprout devil horns myself. Design the games? No, he executes them. Balakole, driver for G1, ready to download.
Reality always hurts. Welcome to the real world, Sega Saturn. Just when you think it can't get any worse, I can only describe this one as taking place in some kind of dystopian Sega land, a world where the 90s never died and being edgy is the norm. I almost wouldn't be surprised if Shadow the Hedgehog was running this place. Instead, it seems like this guy is in charge, taking control of other people and using them as pawns in his depraved video games, which somehow involve getting your eyes sucked out in order to play them. You know, I'm beginning to see why the Sega Saturn wasn't a great success in the 90s. If you had to pop out your eyeballs just to play a game, no wonder it flopped. I mean, how was this supposed to make the console look appealing? It's gruesome. If I saw this when I was six years old, I would have slept under the bed for the rest of my life. In fact, at that age, I used to be scared of the Atari Jaguar or that hellish PS2 error screen. So imagine what this piece of nightmare fuel would have done to me. Ay ay ay. Welcome to the real world, Sega Saturn. You found me, <laughs> Doctor <laughs> Jessington. That's it. Want to see my world of adventures? So many lands, you know, and each more fantastic, more amazing than the last. It's simply bursting with fun. 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 The thing is, you see, I can't stand bored, and I have to keep an eye on everything. And one thing I can see is, you need a trip to my world of adventures, yes. Just ask for Chesterton and we'll go for a little spin. <laughs> Introducing the world's sickest mad scientist, Dr. Chessington. For those of you who might not know, Chessington World of Adventures is a theme park in the UK. In fact, they were giving out free tickets to this place on the VHS of the Power Rangers movie in a previous episode, but if they'd had this advert on the tape instead of that one, I would have wanted to pay not to go there. I mean, who is this guy? He's a complete nutcase, watching over the park like every area is his own personal torture chamber. His laugh at the end just creeps me out. <laughs> <laughs> and what's going on with the effects here? His head spinning around, popping off his shoulders, and the less said about his eyes, the better. I have to keep an eye on everything. <laughs> Oh, so now we know who made the Sega Saturn. In fact, I bet Dr. Chessington is behind all of these sick twisted ads. Yeah, think about it. He built the super happy car, developed the stupid singing shampoo, formulated the fiendish fish fingers with Captain Birdseye, invented the freaky flake, shrunk down Ronald McDonald, turned Dexter into his evil apprentice, started the parade of psychopaths, summoned Satan's iron brew, sucked out a few eyeballs, and still had time to run his own sadistic theme park. Now that is villainy. Make sure you lock your doors, my friends, because Dr. Chessington could be coming for you next. <laughs> Well, that's it for this countdown of craziness. And what a fitting way to celebrate 10,000 subscribers with 10,000 reasons never to sleep ever again. Thanks for watching this video and look out for more reviews coming soon. My eyeballs nearly popped out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, support me on Patreon for early access to new episodes, and don't forget you can buy a ton of these tapes from the official Back to the Past eBay store. See you next time.